Look, come on. Holy crap. Shit, what was that? Mike, so you send me a WhatsApp. I did. Asking about a road. Yes. What's my favorite road? I respond, Lake District. And now I'm here, standing outside the cog. I, I, I'm quite busy. Yeah, so I've got a bit of a plan. We've just finished the restoration of your beloved XJR. It does look magnifique, and you're, I'm delighted. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and thank I thought you. the perfect way to christen it is to take it on a nice long road trip. So your favourite road in the world yes. in the Lake District. It is. Guess where my favourite road is. <laughs> is it, by any chance, in or near Scotland? It is in that Scotland. Is thing. So yeah, I mean, is. you're not that busy. You're just recording a couple of TV shows. Yeah, you've not got much on. Rubbish like yeah, that. Yeah, I was, you know? was asleep in there when you arrived. So the perfect time to take our two supercharged V8 saloons to Lake District in Scotland, two films, two cars. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to get my stuff. A pair of socks, that's about it. The sponsor for this mini road trip series is Shell, and they've been kind enough to fill up both of our cars with the latest Shell V-Power unleaded fuel. What will suit our cars so well is that Shell V-Power unleaded up to 100% cleans critical engine parts with every fill, keeping our engines running like new. The fuel cleans your inlet valves and fuel injectors to maximize engine performance, something that our V8 cars will take every day of the week. And it's not just effective in cars with port fuel injection like these ones here, it's also effective in cars with direct injection straight into the combustion chamber. So that's an intro into the cleaning properties of new Shell V-Power Unleaded, but let's get even techier with a fuel scientist from Shell, Rudiger. Rudy, tell us a bit about yourself. Hi Mike. Yes, I'm part of a global team of 150 fuel scientists and specialists which are dedicated to fuels innovation, development and finally fuels implementation. Okay, well that all sounds awesome, but tell me what is happening in our engines when we use Shell V-Power Unleaded? The new and improved Shell V-Power and Leaded was developed by research through Shell's international team of fuel scientists over a course of roughly five years. We work very close together with the team that develops the Shell V-Power race fuels for Scuderia Ferrari. The cleaning and engine performance recovery properties have been tested intensively by using industry standard tests and Shell-owned tests. Okay, well that all sounds very impressive, but are you telling me that by constantly using Shell V-Power Unleaded in these cars, it's going to fully rejuvenate our engine's performance? Using regular fuels may cause buildup of deposits over time on critical engine fuel system components, like inlet valves for those two cars, for example, or fuel injectors on direct injection engines. Those deposits may impact engine performance at the end. Okay, really. Well, thank you for all that information. And can we please get a shot of his shoes? <laughs> There's something about knowing your car has a full tank of Shell V-Power unleaded that just feels good, almost as if your car's thanking you for treating it right. Anyway, now that they're brimmed, let's hit the road. This isn't my dream road, obviously this is the M6. That's nobody's dream road, it's, it's just a grim necessity. But, a few miles of this, it'll whiz by and we'll be up in the Lake District on the way to my road. Mike to Richard. Hello. You've had so many road trips as a trio with Jeremy and James. What would be your alternate trio in an alternate universe where they don't exist? What other two people would you have along? I know that we're like slowly becoming best friends. But I won't be offended <laughs> if I'm not in your alternate trio. This is helping the miles fly by. I was weirdly asked this the other week and I came up with an answer that surprised me. Please go on. I reckon Tom Waits 
the musician because he's like just a mad poet and an actor and he's just I mean I love every piece of music he's ever made but I'd, I'd love to talk to him I'd be a bit giggly about it and a bit starstruck but I'd love that so Tom Waits because he's cool as well I don't know who Tom Waits is and then um, Ernest Hemingway or Hunter S. Thompson. So Hemingway, Old Man and the Sea, all of that. What a writer, what a chap. I mean, you'd have to challenge on some of his views because they're pretty awful, but um, nevertheless, fascinating man. Or Hunter S. Thompson. The thing is, on a road trip, it is the company, it's everything. I mean, I've known James for centuries because I used to be doing little car TV on Granada Men and Motors. Um, and before that, I was in the press office at Renault. So I'd do all the launches, either hosting or on them. And you'd see the names of James and Jeremy and people come up and you'd be thinking, well, hey, brilliant, I know I'm gonna have a laugh in the evening when we've done the car testing. It does matter. As we ventured on, our questions did seem to steer towards the weird side. I enjoy some ferocious lane discipline. Yeah, but do you do that showboating unnecessary lane discipline where actually you're jiggling about and creating more of a hazard than helping the flow? I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> I'm just saying that I love it. And then somehow got even weirder. No, I do, I do a lot of amateur taxidermy and Morris dancing, but other than that, I'm completely normal. Does amateur taxidermy mean it's a bit shit? 999,996 green bottles standing on the wall. 999,995. You get the picture. I think Richard and I are quite alike when it comes to places that mean a lot to us. We're homeboys. I love going back home to Scotland and it seems no matter where Richard's been in the world, this is where he calls home. Right, this sounds ridiculous, but I'm getting exactly the same feeling in the pit of my stomach I used to get 30 years ago as I approached where this road takes me. And that's the point of a road, isn't it? It's, it's got to go somewhere. And for me, spectacular and at times awesome as this whole stretch of road is, it's what lies at the end that makes it matter to me so much. On your right is Derwent Water. It's a big lake. Yeah, I imagine there's a few of those around here. Yeah, but it's a good one. Oh, on the left, Bowder Stone. What a thing. It's literally just an enormous stone. Bowder as in boulder, Bowder in dialect, and it's like a big rock. Have you ever thought about packing in this TV stuff and having a go at being part of the Lake District Tourist Board? Look at this mossy rock on the right, look at that! The walls here are lovely. I do feel like I'm getting further and further into the Shire. Yeah, it gets very, very hobbity. We're coming up to Borrowdale, which is like a hobbity valley. Audience, please keep your short jokes to yourselves. <laughs> uh, hairy feet is fine, but short, sure, yeah, leave that. Look, come on! If I cry, I don't apologise, because it moves my heart and my soul. Look at it. That's like a kid would draw. Look at a little hill with trees on it. And then the big, creamy smooth jag. It's the perfect vantage point from which to observe what leads to my favorite place in the universe. I'll give it to Richard. This is just getting prettier and prettier. And so sheer. It reminds me a lot of the Highlands of Scotland. Your chances of going where we're going to go now before the car and roads were pretty minimal. Only because of the car can you nip to where we're going. Shit! What was that? Oh. Mike. Yes, did something just happen there? A bit. I'd quite like to stop for a moment. I did hear quite a loud pop. He just went slightly too close to a bit of curbstone. And, um, yeah, there was quite a loud bang. Well, there you go. Come on a road trip with Richard Hammond, and we're going to classify that as a crash. I, I've done a thing. I heard it. 
Don't it's you a, worry, I heard it from the car. It's a narrow road. Okay, I'm going to look first. Oh. <laughs> the pop I heard back there was quite loud. You've got oh. a puncture the tyre, haven't you? Yeah. Ooh. Well, there's an interesting thing. Most of the stone around here is slate. Right. And because of the way it's made, it, it shears and forms very sharp. You're becoming a geography teacher about this. <laughs> oh, I am sorry. That's poor. Well, yeah, I didn't realise there's these little light curb stones that follow the road. Yeah, but and one of them... Just, I just give it a little kiss, you know. I was just kissing the apex. And I'm in the car that's about a foot wider. This is true. And then I think I slipped my tongue in <laughs> and it was just too much. Yes, I know what you're about to ask. I don't know. Is this car old enough to have a proper wheel? Is, is the main thing. If it's too new... It's a space saver and I've ruined everything. Driving on the, your favourite road with a space saver. I'm going to look. I'm going to open the boot. Wherever it is, is under here. Yes. <laughs> Three, two, one. This is the doctor saying, well... <laughs> oh, oh, oh! It's a full-size wheel. Yes, yes, it is. Look. This is a proper motoring experience. Are you able to hold that? Or that I'll hold it. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. On you go. Ooh. I'll, I'll do this. I'll expose myself to tremendous danger. Okay. And discomfort while you sit there. I'll get my jeans and jacket dirty, just not my shoes. I hate jacking cars so much. That's not annoying. Nearly there. You'll have earned your lunch. Good grief. Now I'll hold your nuts. <laughs> You've been waiting to say that <laughs> since you sat on that tire, haven't you? Look, it's nice. It's an excuse to sit around a beautiful scenery. Also, think of the anticipation. It's actually building up the anticipation for my favorite road. We are two and a half miles. Could I use your chair to attach to my car? There you go. I'd say we could swap cars, but then you'd end up putting that through a bloody wall at this rate. I can just hear weird Scottish noises, but I don't know what they <laughs> signify. You are really, you know, reuniting with your Jag through this now. <laughs> Proper first drive. That's me talking it. There you go. A tyre change by Richard Hammond. Yes, I'd like to apologise for being a bit of a dick. It's but okay. It's, I've paid my penance. We're rolling again. Let's put it all away. Not going to take the piss out of me for this, are you? Or mention it ever again? No, no, not at all. Good, 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 good. It'll be between us and yep. 2.3 million people. Okay, that's good. Well, we'll all keep it between ourselves, shall we? Then we don't have to ever talk about it. It's just one of those things that happens. I don't want to get my big white shoes muddy. Oh no, we disaster. Has anybody got any hand wipes? I've got a white interior. Mike, we're on the sort of run up to the actual road now, and this bit is exactly why it wasn't until the invention of the car that the lakes could be opened up. Because you couldn't really just pop up here on a donkey and, and go visit. Yes, I imagine even in a car, certain times of year, this is a bit of a struggle. Yeah, I wouldn't come this route in winter. There's another pass off to the right and there's a low-level route behind. But on a nice day like this, you're all right. Look at this landscape. This is arguably the nicest bit of England I've ever been to. What's nice about this strip of tarmac is it's single track, but the sight lines are amazing. I can pretty much see all the way to the top of the valley here. So if you want to get a bit of a lick on, you can. It always feels like a privilege to be driving your car through this. This feels like the hill's own private world that I'm allowed to, to drive through. The road surface has taken a bit of a battering. They do get weather up here, a lot of it. Coming up to the Honister Slate Quarry now, on the left, that's all fleet width. And it's rumoured to be completely hollow inside because they've hollowed out all the slate from it. I mean, it isn't. But it's a good rumour, isn't it? Does that mean one day it's going to go pop and there's going to be a massive hole? Was that a reference to my tyre, obliquely? <laughs> that was completely by accident, but I will take it. Years ago, Mike came here with my brother Nick 
and he hadn't been here for a long time. We came up on motorcycles and we crested here. And this is the start of my road and you're about to see it. And as it opened up in front of him, he and I both had a little sob in our crash helmets. There it is. Holy crap. That is, uh, that's dramatic. There's a massive sense of history with this whole road because people lived in Buttermere, where we're going, for centuries, and one of the only ways in and out was through this. What a beast. What I'd like you to imagine, I'm just slowing to imagine it at this point, is in a well-prepared Subaru Impreza. That's all you need is a well-prepared Subaru Impreza and a set of cajones so big you can hardly get them in the car and a clear road. If only within the next few months you were going to have something <laughs> like a really nicely prepared Subaru Impreza. I, I, I can't think of a better place to admire this from because I'm in serene old-fashioned comfort looking at this brutal landscape. Well, I'm glad. Not a bad place to reunite with your Jag properly. No, it's, it's perfect. They're, they both have a sense of grandeur, stature, and, and longevity. I might press on a little bit, just... I might apply some of the beans. I've just had a thought. Will this be Buttermere's first Hellcat? I'm going to say yes. Right, I'm going to put it into manual and... bang some gears, as some may say. <laughs> I can't think of anywhere else in the world, any other road, that combines this sense of fearsome grandeur. I mean, it's austere and threatening, but somehow also welcoming and comforting and warm. It's human. It's a little human ribbon draped through this ferocious landscape. It's, it's plucky. It's humans saying, yeah, yeah, we can go there. We can go there. And in a few moments, we will see Buttermere as we round that head down there. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. This lovely ribbon of tarmac. I have wept driving down this road. More than once. When you return somewhere impressive regularly, you never really move on from the person you were when you first encountered it. So when I come here, I am 17, just driving. And that brings all the feelings of being 17, good and bad, to me. Some of it's youthful exuberance and confidence and a sense of immortality. Some of it is nervousness, anxiety. What am I going to do? What am I going to be? And that, as an adult, to have a touch of that now at 53, it's like an edge that I've got back. What was when I was in my early 20s, a nerve-wracking, frightening experience. Life, where's it going to take me? What am I going to do? Now, I'm quite glad to welcome that sense back of possibilities, of undiscovered things yet to happen. It makes me feel young, and I feel surrounded by humankind because of the road, even though I'm completely on my own sometimes. Driving down here, there's the comforting hand of others have made this road. Because I'm not ashamed of coming here as a car lover, because there is a long history of that in the lakes. As I said, that's how it opened up, and it still has. Rallying was massive around here. People still love their car. Not everybody, some people frown, but as long as you're not driving like a Muppet, that's how you get it. Here is Buttermere, look at it! It's almost, I might get pelters for saying this, it's almost like a little bit of Scotland in England. Okay, that, that, that hurts and makes me feel a bit unwell, but I get what you mean. It doesn't have the scale, the grandeur of the Highlands, but somehow it's more accessible at a human level because you can imagine conquering that on the right or that on the left. Do you want me to name every peak? I can, I, I won't do it. It's boring when I do it. This road works on me like a massage. From Honister, that last bit from the quarry. Gradually softening to here and just relaxing. And it, it just, 
it's not just spiritual, it helps me, mends me physically as well. I can feel my shoulders coming down. What's really nice about this is I purely asked Richard, what is your favorite road in the world? I didn't say a driving road, just simply the strip of tarmac that he loves the most. And he's gone for this. For me, I would look for a road that's a bit more open so that I can explore the dynamics of a car a bit more. Richard has gone purely for how this road makes him feel, the visuals, the feeling through the car, and the feeling of the journey. Clearly, he knows that his favorite place in the world is at the end of this road. I massively respect it, I think it's so cool. Richard, thank you for bringing me here. I really enjoyed that. This is my nervous face, really, because I'm exposing myself a little bit. That's my favourite road, the Honister Pass, down to Buttermere, for our drive and our supercharged V8s, and I'm awaiting abuse. No, because I've listened to what you said before about that road, and I totally understand it now. But my road we're going to, it's a lot faster, but because we didn't get up to high speeds, you then can look around. You it's clever, isn't it? switch off from the driving and actually look at what you're going through, and that, Glenn there, I should say, pass. Whoa! <laughs> was absolutely stunning. Right. And it just you, you know it's in England, there. don't you? Yes. But you're all right. Although, right? to be honest, it, it's pretty enough. It would qualify like C tier Scotland, to be honest. It's fairly patronizing. But it is a beautiful drive, beautiful run. Yes. It's a beautiful exactly. run. And exactly. you're absolutely right, it's not a road suited to tail out antics and going berserk. And I don't think you should because you'll miss it. But tomorrow, I've got to prepare for something a bit more. Bracing, a bit more footwork involved. Yeah, so we're not going into spectacular Scotland. Right. We're going to a proper driver's road. It's more a biker's road, actually. So that will be where you don't look at the surroundings, you concentrate on the strip of tarmac in front of you. So my interpretation of the brief was quite a romantic one, really, because it's about destination at the end of the road and the, the sort of experience of soaking up the environment as you get to that destination. Yours is more of an old school. This is a good road because it's just a great stretch of tarmac. Yes, your heart is pumping by the end of it. Really? So I'm buzzing for it. Are these going to get some exercise? Absolutely. Like my brakes might have cooled down by then. They are a wee bit smelly, yeah, aren't they? Are, they're warm. How they're was warm. your fresh tire, by the way? Brilliant. Really good? Superb. Nice so grippy, I, think bit, I, mean, I think I've improved it, if anything. Right, so um, really it's just preparation for tomorrow. Is it an early start? Uh, it will be to get right. across the border. So we need an early finish. Yes. So we need to get into the pub early to yes. leave a suitable gap between leaving the pub and tomorrow. So uh, should we go to the pub now? I've heard they do a cracking steak and ale pie. There's no heard about it. I know full well. <laughs> uh, right, pub. Yes, food. Stay. Back and stay. Is it ticking? It's not that hot then. It's not really, no. <laughs> I've got to work hard. That, that says everything about the road. Yeah, we'll do that on your road tomorrow.